what the fuck? So immediately looking at the list, if you're somebody like me that respects champions, I see that it's missing the IBF champion in Bakram uh, Murtazalia. Who the fuck is that guy? You know, so I think for me personally, that's an issue. If I tell you I'm good, probably you will say I'm both. But if I tell you I'm no good, you know one line. <laughs> Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PGNG. And praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, man. I know what time it is. The doctor's in the house, man. You know, the interesting thing, man, I want to talk about today is that the Ring Magazine has released their uh, their top 10 in the 154-pound junior middleweight, a.k.a. super welterweight division. You know what I'm saying? That Terrence Crawford just made his debut win against Israel Madrimov, you know, and, and, and he won. You know, now he's a champion in his after his first fight at an at a elevated uh, weight class, right, higher division. And um, he won the WBA BA title, so naturally they would come and rearrange the uh, the order of their of their top ten list. And they, but the the coincidental part, but which is what I was referring to earlier, was that we were talking about this in the morning stream, and you know, and now they released it, you know, appropriately. And uh, we're 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 going to cover that right now, man, because I think that the list is interesting, man. And I um, mean, you know, we're gonna start off from 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 ten. So we gonna let's let's just name the top ten that they have. So they have number one is Terrence Crawford. I'm gonna reference the list right here on my on my other phone. So so. Uh, Bear with me. Um, so, the, the the first one is Terrence Crawford. Second one is Israel Majumov. Three is Fedash Fedora. Four is Virgil Ortiz. Five Tim Zhu. Six Berhi Serhi Boa Chuk. Uh, uh, seven Eric Silubin. I know it looks like Boa Chuk, but you know he has said it himself. That it's Boa Chuk, the correct pronunci pronunciation. Uh, number seven Eric Silubin. Eight is Jesus Ramos. Se um, nine is Charles Conwell, and number ten is Brian Mendoza. Now, immediately before I dissect it, I think this is a pretty good list if you consider the fighters in the 154 pound division. Bullshit. Bullshit! Bullshit, 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 bullshit. So we could always critique, right? But let's give them some credit, man. I think they pretty much got the the top three, top four, or top five, and and, and correct. I think they have all the personnel, you know, with the exception of, of one, right? So immediately looking at the list, if you're somebody like me that respects champions, I see that it's missing the IBF champion in Bakram uh, Murtazaliev, you know. So I think for me personally, that's the issue, but. Generally speaking, that is this is a pretty good list, especially when you consider the fact that Bakra Bertazaliev, you know, he hasn't really fought high caliber opponents, high quality opponents. No disrespect. You know, his last four opponents, uh, his, the last one being Jack Colke, he's a pretty decent dude. But his last four opponents, you know, all of them had at least four losses. Damn. I'm sorry. And, and, you know, and um, so I do think that while I would have him on the list, um, him missing is not inappropriate. And I, I do love the fact that they included Brian Mendoza because Brian Mendoza, while he does have four losses, three of those losses came to people that are on this list. So that's that's dope. You know what I'm saying? You got to give these warriors a credit, you know, uh, and, and demonstrate that it's not not all about being undefeated, but it's also about who you fought, you know, and Brian Mendoza fought the best of them. So let's break it down, you know, like I said, so at, at number 10, uh, Brian Mendoza, I'm cool with that, you know, like like I said, he has four losses with three of those being the three people on this list. Um, you know, Charles Conwell, you know, we just saw him fight uh, Kieri Gray on the undercard of Virgil Ortiz versus uh, Serhi Boachuk, and he won, you know, in decisive fashion. And Kieri Gray, speaking of uh, Bakram Mertazaliev, that's that's uh, one of uh, Bak uh, that's one of Bakram's wins as well. So he has a commonality with the champion as far as opponents go in. Um, granted, it was years later, but he still beat him in better fashion, you know. And I think you got to include that too. So, but me personally, you know, I'm cool with Brian Mendoza, but I would have to take him off his list to include Bakram and and me. Um, let me say so. That means I would put Charles Conwell at number ten because while I do. I uh, think he's good and I would love to see him against the other uh, uh, heavy hitters like Virgil Ortiz you know he's been calling him out I think that um, he deserves to be on this list you know um, so I would have him number 10 I would as, as, as much as I just celebrated uh, Brian Mendoza because he's never been stopped you know he lost to Sebastian Fedora <laughs> sorry correction I meant to say that Brian Mendoza lost to uh, uh, Serhi Boachuk um, Tim Zhu and Jesus Ramos he actually beat Sebastian Fedora you know what I'm saying he knocked him out what <laughs> Now he's trying to love oh, this he the So indeed, Brian Mendoza does have four losses. Damn. 
I'm sorry. Um, um, but they're all by decision. I think Boatrue probably beat him the worst. You know, had his face all swollen up. If y'all saw that, you know. But I would have to remove him in in, in, in regards and respect for the champion Bakram Murtazaliyev. So I remove. I take it for number ten. That bumps Charles Conwell from number nine. I would put him down to number ten. I would move Jesus Ramos, who's a good fighter. He only has one loss to Erickson Lubin, who a lot of people thought it was controversial, even though Erickson Lubin won by unanimous, unanimous decision. I thought it was a good. I thought it was a good win for Erickson Lubin. But I do understand since it was. A close fight and Jesus Ramos is a, is a pretty young fighter you know I think he's like 23 22 or 23 years old you know um, he, he did have a good pretty good showing because Erickson Lubin Erickson Lubin is, is a contender you know so I would I would have Charles Cobble number 10 I would put Erickson uh, I would put Jesus Ramos as number 9 I like that order I would put Erickson Lubin, Lubin at number 8 uh, Erickson Lubin he did get beat up uh, kind of, you know, his face was swollen in the same fashion of Brian Mendoza versus Serhi Buachuk, but Erickson Lubin's uh, face swelling, excessive swelling, came at the hands of Sebastian Fandora, who's a current WBC, WBO champion right now. So I would move him down, and um, I would have him now at number eight. Uh, Serhi Buachuk, I'm cool with that. I'll put him at number uh, seven. Um, matter of fact, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Matter of fact, yeah, I'll put him as number seven. And then number six, I would have uh, Bakram Mertazaliev. Uh even though I, if Bakram and Serhi Boachuk were, were, were to fight, I would have Bakram losing. I would have Serhi. I would I, me personally. I would lean towards uh, Serhi Boachuk. But like I said, I give a lot of lot of credit to uh, to the champion, and he's undefeated right now. So I would put Bakram above Serhi Boachuk, even though I would have Boachuk uh, beating him. What? So I'd have uh, Bakram at number at number six, um, and Serhi at number seven. Then I, I have uh, Tim. They have Tim Zhu at number five. I think I would take Tim Zhu off of number five and I would raise him to number two. Um, so I'll put him after Terrence Crawford. I have Terrence Crawford number one, and we're not going to include Jermel Charlo, right? Because Jermel Charles is, is inactive, is, is inactive. But him being the former undisputed, he would definitely go at the top of this list by default. But I agree with them to not include him right now at this very moment. So I would put Terrence. I, I, I'd like the order, but I would shift Virgil Ortiz down. I would shift Sebastian Fedora down, and I would put uh, uh, and Israel Majumov down, and I'll put uh, Tim Zhu at number two. So my final list would look like Terrence Crawford number one. Tim Zhu number two. Even though he lost to Fedora, if you were watching that, and this is where you say you know men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie, but numbers can be misleading, right? So if you go off the fact that Tim Zhu has a loss and it came to Fedora, you'd be like, okay, cool, he should be behind Fedora. But if you looked at how that fight transpired and how it went down and the circumstances surrounding that fight, you would know that Tim Zhu was severely handicapped in the second round. And I think it's safe to say that Tim Zhu would have beat Fedora. And I know that it was a small sample size, but in those in those few rounds that he fought Fedora. Everything equal, you know, those two rounds, he busted Fedora's lip and busted his nose, had him leaking in just two rounds. And then after he got hurt, I'll say after the third or fourth round, it went heavily in Sebastian Fedora's favor, which I do credit Fedora because he had to win. You know, he had to win with the circumstances in front of you. But, you know, it doesn't change the fact that Tibzu was severely handicapped. But wait, there's more. Also, yeah, when you consider that Brian Mendoza, all those of Sebastian Fedora beat Tim Zhu in a, um, you know, in, in, in a fight that was, you know, put Tim Zhu at a severe handicap, you know, with that hellacious cut that he sustained on his head. Brian Mendoza uh, did knock out Sebastian Fandora prior to that, prior to Sebastian beating Tim Zhu. So you got to include, you got, you got to consider that too when you think about Brian Mendoza because he beat Sebastian Fandora by knockout. So my personal list would be Terrence Crawford, number one, uh, uh, Tim Zhu, number two, uh, despite losing to Fandora. Uh, uh, Israel Majumov number three because he lost to Terrence Crawford and I, I really think that uh, the only people that beat him are Terrence Crawford and Tim Zhu uh, uh, I have him number three I would have number four as uh, even though Sebastian Fedora is a champion um, yeah I would, I'm kind of cool with him being number four no you know what I would put Virgil Ortiz over over, over Sebastian Fedora um, even though even though Sebastian Fedora is a champion, I think Virgil Ortiz, Sebastian Fedora is a good fight. I would lean towards Virgil Ortiz. So I'll put Virgil Ortiz as uh, number four. I'll put Sebastian <clears throat> Fedora as number five. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yeah, so with, so with that being said, I would have personally, my new list would be Terrence Crawford, number one, Tim Zhu, number two, uh, three, Israel Madrimov. Number four, I have Virgil Ortiz. Number five, I'd have Fedora, Sebastian Fedora. Number six, I'd have Bakram Murtazaliev. Number seven, I have Serhi Boachuk. Number 
eight, I'd have Erickson Lubin, you know, and number nine, I'd have Jesus Ramos. And number 10, I have the up and coming prospect, Charles Combo, man. Y'all let me know about y'all, um, your, your, your 154 pound division order. Um, do y'all agree with mine more so than the ring magazine? Do you agree with the ring magazine more or, 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 or drop your list in the comments, man. I'd love to, I'd love to have a discussion because 154 pound division has definitely made a resurgence since the inclusion of the number one pound for pound fighter, Terrence Crawford, and then also the very popular fighter in Errol Spence Jr. So it has, it's been, it's been revitalized, rejuvenated, man. I love to see it. I love to see how, um, in a couple months, or maybe a year's time, how how this how this division will play out if if Terrence Crawford could get uh, undisputed. I think the biggest threat, the biggest roadblock to him potentially is Tim Zhu for him to get undisputed. But we'll see, man, because T- Tim Zhu has to beat Bakram or Tazali. But I think that this is one hell of a step up in caliber opponent for Bakram, you know, as the IBF champion. So we'll see. Like I said, I'll lead towards Tim Zhu, and that's just my breakdown, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it. Remember, most importantly, with God, we can do anything without God or nothing. The doctor's out. Peace. From the hood to college, both worlds, they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold, we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets.